Hi, and welcome to this last uh, tutorial. So before moving on, let's uh, recapitulate what we have done so far. So in the first tutorial, we work it out. We work a little bit into uh, how to set in SVSkin the right corrections, just to take into account non orthogonality and excuseness. Then we move to another tutorial to work a little bit with the uh, TVD methods and to choose the best TVD methods. Recall that in OpenFund you have many methods available, but remember you don't need all of them. Just choose the, the, your, the best TVD according to your needs, personal experience, and also I think it's a common agreement in the com community that maybe Mimod and Van Lee are the best ones. So recommend you to stick within those. Then we went and we work a little bit into on the relaxation factors with the steady case. Then also we saw the influence of the uh, tolerances in the linear solvers. Then we move in another case to look into gradient information. So we have here a good agreement between different measures, okay, for the solution. But then when we look at gradients and uh, gradients, we saw the differences. So how to get good gradient approximations. Then we move into a very severe case, a shock wave, okay, and how to set up again the pneumatics, but also how to do corrections to improve the gradients computations and computations as all the I I I quantities that you have in your iterative uh, solution method, okay. And finally, we work on the relaxation in, on the steady solver. So we put there in you know, all these six tutorials, all those ingredients, and now our last tutorial will be uh, can, uh, practical case, the NACA 0012 airflow, but it's a transonic case. So these are difficult to solve, in particular in open fun. Uh, we're going to see what resolve the wall modeling, but see here that we have three uh, approaches. So we have the steady solution, the pseudo transient, I will show you this one, and then we have the steady solution. So usually on a steady, most, most of the time, if you have the good numerics, it would work. Okay, with no problem, but then instead it may be tricky to get it converged, in particular if you have uh, wall resolving meshes, and then you have to do the transient that is kind of a, a way in between uh, a steady solvers and unsteady solvers. So we're going to look at this. We know all our pneumatics, we know what we're doing, choosing the skins and the relaxing, and I will show you a few additional tricks, okay? By the way, this case have you have you have this is a validation case. Okay, you have the validation case. So I won't run the the, the cases up to the convert solution. Okay, it's up to you. But I showed you just the the beginning. So here you you, you have the graph. But also, if you go to our website here, you will have the data, and also you have the references that you can get the data for this transonic case. So let's go. Whatever you. Uh, extract your cases you will have the folder uh NECA 0012 transonic and you will find you, you will find there are six folders okay so in the description of it, each directory when you see wr mean wall resolving okay so you integrate you are not using let's say wall functions and then wm is wall modeling okay so you have you see these three different solvers using the different measures. So we're going to have raw simple phone, steady solutions, raw people phone, LTS, which is which is stand for local time stepping. Probably if you are looking for steady solutions, this is the way I recommend you to go. It's much much stable. Okay, and then the final will be raw pimple phone full full on steady. So let's go first to raw pimple phone, uh, raw simple phone. Sorry, the steady. So let me point out something here. Here you have the wall modeling and wall resolving. In this case, it's very difficult to make it converge using the wall resolving mesh. You will see that the mesh. It's perfect, but getting converged is difficult. So you, you, you start to apply many tricks on the relaxing everything. You will have the impression that it's converging, but it's difficult. Okay. They believe that you need to run a lot of iteration, like 30 or 40,000 iteration, which is not practical. Okay. First, you need to, to be in front of your computer, just changing parameters. So that is what basically will make it impractical. And then a long number of iterations. So in this case, if you move to the raw pimple phone LTS, lock and tiny step, and you will get a faster 
convergence and you don't need to to be stick in in front of your monitor so also take into this into consideration on running simulations for this case i would run the wall modeling but have that in mind that this is tricky to converge so let's go to the case raw simple phone uh, uh, uh sorry raw simple phone wall modeling so you saw you have the directory structure, you have the script that will run everything, and let's open the control did uh, SV skin, SV solution, and SV auction dictionary. So control did very standard. Remember for me this is a standard practice putting all, always printing this information minimum and maximum of in this case I want to see pressure, velocity, temperature, row density, k omega nu, and this is the uh, uh, the viscosity, lamina viscosity or physical viscosity and all the molecular viscosity. So if we go to SV skin, let's just skim this, this file. So you see that steady state. Then how to compute gradients, we know how to do it. We, we work it out this in, in a few tutorials. So see that we're using cell in the limit for velocity. So meaning that I would like a better accuracy there. And also remember, previously I mentioned that also it's a good idea when you work in the steady to use it in the auction. Personal experience, but it's up to you to test it, to try it. Okay, so, and then we have the other. See that uh, how every uh, open phone is implemented and also commercial software as well, you will have this one. You, 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 you have the, the, the ability to, to, to select gradients and all this discretization schemes, divergence, everything in a selective way. So according to your variable, you can use different methods. So we have these methods there, and then we go to divergence. So remember, don't get lost in all the options. So remember that limit linear win is okay. So in this case, you feel free to run linear win. It will run, but in my benchmark, and I found that this one is the one that it gives you the best results closer to your to, to the experimental values that, that you have. So see that what we have here, linear win, that most of the time will run, and then a good TBD. Here, I don't even think about using linear or limited linear because I know it will give me problems. Then for discretization of the turbulence variables, okay, we have k omega. We can go full win or linear linear win. Okay, so one thing important that probably a few authors will will disagree with this. Also, you will need to draw the, your own conclusion, but remember that turbulence is a diffuse process, so it might not hurt. Uh, you might not be hurting too much the solution if you use here a uh, win a diffuses scheme. Kind of, you are promoting that diffuses process. In this case, we are going to start with uh, this method. We are going to see what is going on. So we're using the second order. Then for the energy, we're using limited linear. So for energy also, you can go, you can go up wind, you will add some diffusion. So it's recommended to stick with this method. You can also use the limited, the linear wind. I didn't put it here, but you, you can add it as well, linear wind. So let, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Okay. So, but probably, yeah, yes, this kind of recall that adding for this variable that is related to the transonic correction linear will sometimes give a problem. You can also test it. So we're showing like this. We have this correction. Remember that I told you this is kind of a standard. And then we move to SB solution. Nothing to say here. So we go here and see simple method. We're using consistent form formulation. See that this case is transonic. So now you can add this keyword to, to add that new correction. Then see that we know that, remember that you, you, when you have energy equation, also you will have that Laplacian that depends in the north north orthogonality, and that is more critical than all the other Laplacian that you will have in, in momentum equation or turbulence equation or your pressure equation, whatever. So it's important to do remain to do at least one correction. In this case, I like to start with three co three corrections, and then slowly I can reduce to two or one according to some criteria that I will let you know, and then on the relaxation factor. So here 0 0.9, depending uh, of what I'm getting, if my solution is oscillatory, I might need to reduce this. So as you see, very standard, we address everything. And if we go to SV solution, this is very important to add it when you are doing high speed compressible flow. Sometimes it might happen that your variables, in particular temperature, 
can can oscillate or, or can go with very high values or very low values. So here you are bounding that 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 bad. So so here that I am adding a limit between 100 and 800, I know that never that temperature will go to those values. So I, I'm putting these values to avoid this one. And this is particularly useful at the beginning. At the beginning it might happen, so you limit that. Okay, and also you can choose how long do you want to activate it? In this case, I leave it all the time, but it's one you can say, uh, uh, turn it on. Okay, so see that this is a one very useful trick. You can, there is something similar for, for, for velocity, to limit velocity, and if I will recall for the turbulent variables. And another trick that you can use, so you go to thermophysical properties, also you can start your simulation using constant viscosity, a little bit high value and then as you keep iterating you go and switch to your actual model or to the actual uh, viscosity value so see here that i will put like this and i can start like this and this will add stability remember this diffusion is that quantity molecular or numerical is that quantity that will stabilize your solution in this case we're adding molecular diffusion Okay, so this is another trick. I will I will show you. I will use it. So let's run this case. So the mesh is regenerated using block mesh. Okay, in the latest version, they added something to do airfoils. So later we're going to look that. So look at that. The solution is running. And see that what is important to plot. So here I can check the minimum and maximums. And sometimes it may happen here. You will start to see values like go to 10,000. You know that something is run. Okay. It might happen also with the, these quantities, the trolling quantities. Okay. So see that it's running. It's very stable. We're computing our forces, everything. And something, how, how do I choose this correction on orthogonal? So a good criterion is that you need to check that the value, the initial residual, is reducing in a monolithic way. So if at one point you see that, for instance, is you put here two corrections and you see that the second or third corrections are increasing or are still here, it's better to add more corrections to see when they start to decrease. Okay, but also that can be an indication that it's a problem with your mesh. But look at here that after one correction, I'm already reducing the residual. So probably it's better, I don't need to have all these three corrections and actually the third one is not helping too much. So I can stop with two corrections. So this is the way how I choose it. So, <clears throat> so I always like to put here three and then monitor at the beginning of your solution and then you can see, you can change that value. So I can go here, change it to two and see that we are monitoring and see that you have that behavior that you want these initial procedures to drop in a monolithic way. Monitor your quantity, see that K is becoming a little bit unbounded. So how we can solve this one? And sometimes this, this is important. So the, this value I think is a little bit high. So I know that that unboundedness might be related with the method, with the method I'm using for the turbulent variable. So I'm using this linear win. So if I switch now to upwind, that unboundedness, you see that it's gone. So that is another trick. So you can start your simulation using upwind and let it run and then at one point switch to second order. So meaning that you are starting with a robust uh, uh, simulation and then ending with an accurate solution. Okay, very valid tree. So remember, at this point, we're running, even if we have a high viscosity, you see that those quantities were becoming unbounded. So now let's go to the next step and let's switch to the actual viscosity model. Okay, so see that some molecular viscosity stabilize your solution. So probably here, I let it run a little bit too much. You said I do this for 200 iterations. One thing also remember that this step I'm using this manually, but sometimes it might not be practical to be uh, in front of the computer doing this, or if you are doing parametric studies, so you will need to optimize this. It's relatively easy to optimize this. You can do your own scripts or there are some function objects that will do this switching automatically. There is no problem. So now that we switch to the actual viscosity, okay. Let me go here. Okay, I don't see the change. Okay, I have the thermal viscosity there. It still is that value. I don't know why. 
is having haven't taken the actual value. Okay, it's not taking the actual value. This is a string. It should be it should be working a constant. Let me go back here and put it back here, back here. Okay, sort of uh, Okay, it seems, okay, I need to check this one, but uh, I, uh, apparently my version since, or the one that I use, it seems that it's not doing this uh, update while running. So let's keep it like this. So monitor everything. Okay, see that CL, your CDs, you check your experimental values. You will see that probably this is, is getting close to those values. So that you have it there. Okay, but it is oscillator. Okay, those quantities are so oscillator. So if you plot this one, you will see that they will they will oscillate. In. Okay, and for instance, let's do something that we know the behavior. So if I go here, and let's say that I comment this one, meaning that I'm not under relaxing, we know what will happen. It's likely that it will crash. Okay, so put that and. It might start to become crazy this all where I don't pawn I want pawn and eventually it might Okay. So now it red and now it seems look at that it diverge. Okay. So that is important of the under relaxation and depending on the methods you are doing the simple normal, you know that the under relaxations are something zero three, zero seven, zero two for pressure, zero seven for all the variables. And for the consistent zero nine is okay. Sometimes you might reduce it. Okay, so it's up to you. It's very pro problem dependent. So let me keep running here. So let me see. Run all, and this is the command here. Okay, now it restarted, and now I have the actual value. Viscosity. Okay, I will report this. And okay, this is this is it. Okay, so the corrections nothing new you can change everything okay so as you go here with linear also it's likely a problem that it will diverge so this is the wall modeling case so let me stop it here and let's see a solution okay just to show you the mesh so wall modelings are relatively easy steady fully steady to get it converged you see here that it was converging relatively fast things get difficult when you go uh, world resolving. It will run, but to get the right values, there are many things involved that it will make it tricky. So this is your solution, okay? So remember that here you, you are seeing some transient. We have seen that, okay? It's not time ac accurate, but you're seeing some behavior. So see here that you have the chop wave somewhere uh, forming there. And when you have chop waves, the whole physics change. We have seen that in a couple of tutorials. So this was the simple case. Let's move to the uh, LTS case. So you have raw pimple phone LTS. So let's go to the WR, the world resolving. Okay. Raw pimple phone LTS. So first, uh, okay. Raw pimple phone LTS. Okay. So let me generate the mesh here. We haven't seen the match. So what we have is this. Well, it's not, it, it is a scale. It's something like that. Okay, there are some others. So see that you can control the stretching towards the wall. The domain is much, much larger. Okay. And then the flow is entering a, 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 an angle of attack. I think it's 1.55. Okay. So if we go run all before running let's see the dictionaries and what is going on so if we go here lts world resolving as the solution we have control d as the auction see that again we're adding that limiting in the temperature so as you go control d there is nothing new okay we added all the function objects that remember i like to put White plots, forces, everything there, minimum and maximum values. If we go to SV skins, we have this new method, local Euler. This is the local time stepping. And after running, I will show you what is it. But basically, what it's doing, when you run steady solvers, the, the uh, sorry, on the steady solvers, those solvers are 
they have a global time step, meaning that the the times the CFL number is controlled by the smallest cell. Okay, in this case, local Euler means that each cell will have a larger uh, a larger CFL number. So cells that are far from where things are happening, in this case, far from the airflow, are large cells, and that those large cells will advance faster the solution, and then closer to the body, your advance is lower. So that is the idea of local time step. You know, as you see, it's something in between a steady on a steady. Again, it, the, we are violating a lot of physical principles there, like in a steady solution, but it helps at getting a steady solutions, okay, getting faster outcomes. Remember, always with the steady solver, you get you will going to get that outcomes. But sometimes it's on the steady solvers, you will run, you will need to run a million times that will will make it restrictive or maybe not. But if you have some time limitations, probably it's not a great idea. It's better to use LTS that probably much much less uh, steps you will re reach a steady solution or let's say a statistically steady solution. So again, we look at the discretization. Look at that. We know what is going on here. I won't say anything here. Again, see that here for turbulence, I now we're starting for trying to win. Then energy, I'm using this method. Okay, everything okay. And to control the local time stepping, it's not controlled by this delta t. The delta t will work in a similar way as the steady. Okay, it will be advanced, will advance in iterative fashion. It will, the, now that local time set, will be controlled in the SB solution dictionary. And as you go here, see that you have these centers here. So these are the enters that will control everything. So see here that I'm defining a maximum current number. So I want a maximum current number of 0 0.9 and in each cell will have a different uh, tiny step according to this one. Uh, again, see that this is a severe severe case. So you can go, you can try and you can go probably to CFL of five, but the solution will become unstable. So in this case, you have it here, 0 0.9 is okay. Then these two options will help you add a smooth the variation of time state in your domain. Remember that you will have different cells, different time state, and that time state will change. So this will help you add, add uh, uh, smooth that variation. And then you can also limit your time state. Again, you can under relax. You see here that we have under relaxation. So we have the under relaxation here. You can set here the tolerance of the outer residual control. We also address this one, okay? And here we're setting the number of correctors. So again, the idea is the same as the previous, previous case. Okay, probably I like to start the simulation, put in here three, see how those residuals is, the, 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 the error, the initial residual is falling, dropping, and then see the convergence. And, try to change, reduce, if you can reduce, okay? So one of the things is that you know that each one of these iterations will add more time to your computation. So we, at the end of the day, we want a solution, a good, accurate, stable solution. So very good advice that do not sacrifice computing time over solution accuracy, okay? Meaning that do not make your solution run faster because it's likely that you are going to lose accuracy. So if you lose, if you do something like this, in this case that you have shock wave compressor, it's likely that you will lose accuracy or your solution will diverge. Okay, so let's put it here. Again, transcendent correction, consistent, and nothing else to address. So let's run. So by the way, all these cases are running with four cores. If you have less cores, you, you will need to, to, to modify the dictionary. So let's see what is going on here. So I see that you are running and see that you have this message here. This message, previous, when you run it on a steady, you will see just your CFL and time set. Here, see that it's giving you a range of time stats. So this means that there are some cells that has have this time set and there are some other cells that have this time set, okay? And this is how you are smoothing and damping your, your time step to avoid strong oscillations. So this is the idea of the lock and time stepping, okay? And see that you are advancing here, see that three corrections, probably after the second correction, you might stop, you, you, we see that the residuals are, are just going down in a monolithic way, so it might be a good idea just to do two iterations, just to save a little bit. 
of computing time. So you put here two and we have it and the solution is running. Okay. So I see that also you have the outer correctors loop or the iterative piece of loop, the pimple calling up and fun and see that we put a maximum of 20 iterations, but it will stop is if one of these conditions are rich and see that here after two iterations, we have reached the, the, that condition. So here doing three iterations in theory will multiply by three your computing time. But if you remember the case of the chat two, you will realize that these are important corrections because this one is the one that it will give you more accuracy and stabilize your solution. So you let it run and that's all here. You will need to wait a long time. Remember this is well resolved and probably about five or six thousand iterations you will start to see that these values start to stabilize close to the actual values okay if you use these values if you want you can go with larger good and number but it's likely that it will diverge so you will start to to uh, or you will need to to add more corrections and reduce uh, uh reduce your under relaxations to stabilize so it's not very practical. So in this case, let me go and increase this one to two. And I think it's likely that maybe we'll diverge or we'll start to see first things that look at that as you increase your maximum CFL, see here that you are iterating, it's taking more iterations to converge, which is something that we should expect and see that more iterations, your quantities is still bounded, but pre always pay, play attention pay attention to your quantities and see here that Omega is starting to become a little bit large. Okay. So maybe that modification that we had of increasing the CFL to two, it wasn't a good idea. It have an impact here, but in time it might settle, who knows, but see that why it's important to monitor that quantity because it's you don't mo mon monitor these quantities. This is a behavior that you are not going to see. And even the solution is converging. Maybe when you go and visualize your solution or start to do some averaging, you will realize that something is going wrong. Okay. In this case, you can monitor what you are running. You monitor and you can identify errors and you can know in particular who is the responsible, who is the, the culprit of your divergence or the loss of uh, accuracy. Okay. So. For instance, we can try as it's running, we can try and go here and probably I would like to stabilize and I might go here and do something like that. So I reduce the under relaxation to gain more stability. So see that probably, yeah, probably not. It seems that now, nah, okay. It might have, I think it had an effect on the number of, uh, outer correctors maybe so i'm not sure but again didn't didn't have a, a large effect in that quantity but in general it will stabilize your your your, your iterative scheme okay so what else you can do so for instance uh you can come here and as you go here you have turbulence already at win and maybe i can add the method here I didn't have it, but upwind didn't have an incredible stabilizing effect in the solution. So if I add that method, uh, put it there now and switch into upwind and, and let's see what happens. One thing also is important that now the fact that we're winding that is first order accurate doesn't mean that your solution will converge faster. And sometimes maybe it might converge slower. Okay. It will take more iterations to 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 reach that tolerance but you are adding more more stability okay so that to see the effect of this quantity you will need to monitor velocities but I already see that effect here in my my leaf and drag okay so this one is if i put it here upwind this means that i have a very robust solution okay it will smooth any oscillation of velocity okay also if you have shock waves so you you will smear those shock waves okay so that's why we like to to stay with second order accurate methods or second order accuracy of higher so at this point you will need to let it run okay until 
well, it's up to you, you know, <laughs> when you stop, but you monitor some quantities of, of interest. Okay, so interesting case, nice case. So let me stop here. We have a few times that, and let's post process because I want to show you something that is also safe in the field. Perform build end. So if I go here, the compose open. Uh, okay, the compose open, move here. So, okay, so it's still moving, converging. But if you go check at your fields, you will see a new field, this one, R delta T. So this is the reciprocal of delta T. So we know that, let me plot. Okay, so we know that close to the body we should have because we have the smallest cells and according to our CFL in the smallest cell, so actually this is our mesh, see that very nice mesh, very fine close to the body. So close to the body, the smallest cells according to the maximum current number will give me the largest, uh, this, the smallest time step, okay? But here you are plotting the reciprocal, so it will be the inverse. If Okay, so close to the cell, close to the body, I will have the largest time steps. So here you can see, visualize that local time step. Okay, so let me change the scale and prove here, for instance, 100. So, okay, so I see the, where you have red, you have the largest, the smallest time step and blue the largest one. So far from the body where you have the largest cells, you have large time steps, so the solution is advancing fast, and then close to the body, you have a smallest time step to damp your solution. Okay, so this is the approach. If you want to look for steady solutions, this is the approach I, I recommend you to use. It's much more stable than the steady, in particular for cases where you have uh, severe physics in this case that you have shock wave and high speed flows. So see that this is what is happening. Okay, so red cells means small time steps, blue large time steps, and this always just will advance at different time steps. So again, this is why it's also important to have those damping and smoothing because going from, for instance, see here that we have a very small time step and suddenly it goes large. Okay, so this is Somehow it's a good idea to smooth and damp the change between times. Okay, if so you do this to, in a way that is too large, probably you will add some instabilities that it will reflect in your solution or will make your solvers diverge or oscillate. Okay, so that's what, I, what you're doing when you are changing in particular these two parameters. R delta smooth coef and damping coef. You know, usually use these two values. So again, there you will need to do some trial and error. Okay, but those two values are are, are okay. So that was the LTS solver. Okay, so now let's move to the next solver, and with this we will end, and that is the raw pimple font. Okay, on a steady, here I will go wall resolving. And now let me put that to run, but just again, let's run, let's read the main dictionaries. Control D, SV key, SV solution, and SV auction, you have the use of limited. So important since I go here, SV skin, see that now we'll go Euler, we have the gradients, everything is standard, nothing to add here. So here I decide, I decide to go for this formulation, but remember that also you have the min mod B, okay? So it's up to you to play with those. And very standard. If we go to SV solution, again, same, we know linear solvers. And here we go to pimple formulation, okay? Transonic, consistent, look at the N correctors, three, I'm putting one, but remember, it's a good idea to start with three, monitor, and then you can reduce it. And then 20 outer correctors, and ID, I will do, I will be doing this outer loop, and then it will converge to these values. And then as user on the relaxing to add more stability. 
And then something important here in control D, see that now we define the delta T. So see that you, I put here a small value. However, I'm using the auction adjust of the time, time set. I will adjust my time set to have to reach this maximum current number. What is important here is that usually it's a good idea to put a small value here in that way. The solver starts from a small time step and then it will scale, will run up slowly up to reaching these values. You put here a large value, usually it will give you some oscillation at the beginning. So it's a good practice to put there a small value and then we'll, we'll scale. So as we look at the output here, see that you have here, and actually it will be better to even reduce a little bit more your taxes. See that I have a current of 1.2 that is a little bit high. Okay, so let me add another zero here. If I run here, See that now my first iteration C to 15 and then slowly it will go up to five. Okay. And see that this is very important because those initial iterations can have an external impact in whatever is going on. Okay. And see that even th this case, remember this is compressed with shock wave and we're going to a large uh, current number. Remember previous case that we went up to 200. Here, in theory, you can go to 200, but if you go to such a large CFL, it's likely that you are going to miss that shock wave. You are not going to resolve. Probably it will, it will, it will diverge the solver, but it's not diverging because it, it, the, because of the time states, because you are missing that, that, that physics. Okay. The solver is implicit, unconditionally stable. You can put any time step, but if you choose time step too large, you miss a lot of physics and your matrices will become strange and then it will diverge there. Okay, so be careful with that. Okay, and this is the point that do not sacrifice solution accuracy over computing time. Okay, so probably in these cases, it's a good idea to stay here in one. Is you want good accuracy. Okay, and this is another practice. So you can go, you can leave it at five, and then in one point when you see that your values start to stabilize, reduce it to get better precision. So you can go large CFLs and then reduce it to get that better precision. Remember that always that better precision should be, should come together with second order accuracy for momentum here for the divergence of velocity. Okay, so. Just to show you also here what I told you that it's a good idea to let it drop the initial residuals in a mono monolithic way. So see here that the search correction maybe is not necessarily. I can stop at the first one. So I can go back here and instead of putting three here, leave it as one. Okay, so we know that we have that behavior. They are falling in a monolithic way. And then you see also the autocorrector for, for pressure. Maybe we don't need them. So if you look at the outer residuals, see that it's still they are falling in a monolithic way. So probably the search correction is not necessarily. So leave it two and one. Again, this one are important. We have seen that, that this one will give you accuracy and it's doing two. So now I know what is going on. I get this on the speed, but I'm sure that those modifications that I'm doing here are they still giving me accuracy because I will moni I was monitoring previously that my residuals will, will, were dropping. But here at least I like to do one and here remember at least you need to do one. If you put zero there you are not going to do anything. Okay, so let's do something here. So if I go here, I can increase to 20, but don't do it. Okay, if you go from 5 to 20, also it's not a good idea because you can add large oscillations in time step. So if you want to increase your CFL number, advice, do it slowly. So you go from 5 to 8, you let the solvers stabilize, monitor all your quantities. Okay, so see here that is increasing arrive to eight okay monitor your quantities let it run a little bit 
Okay, everything is stable. No, there are no problems. So see here again, Omega is becoming a little bit large. Okay, but it's not divergent. So now that everything is stable, this is stable. You can go here again, 20, 10. So usually I like to, to do it in increments of two. Okay, so I go one, two, four, six, eight. And when it's compressible, I don't like to go more than 10. Okay, but in this case, just to show you that it will run. Okay, let's go to 20. So you see that everything is stable. It's still, you see just two outer correctors to converge. Okay, this is the problem. And I know that this it will give me, it will have an impact on your forces. So and now I go to 12. And just to show you now that you can go large time shape with complicated physics, something high speed compressible flow with shot wave, and there is no problem, but you need to monitor things. Okay, and you already have your, your recipe, so you know what, what is going on. So now we have in 12, so now let me go a little bit larger, let me go to 15. Okay, so you keep monitoring, always monitor. Okay, every change that you do is a good idea to, to monitor. Okay, and if you see that something goes back or something is strange, go back immediately to the previous time step or go to one. One, is, it will give you always a solution. Okay, so here, a stable solution, nothing is strange. All my quantities, a little bit of boundedness here but it still is okay pressure t makes perfect physical sense this is starting to look bad but see that viscosity is still molecular one is still making sense and my quantities are slowly moving but it should converge to the to the values that, that we know so now we go here 18 that this is already at this point it is too large even as you go uh, mother uh, source, uh, softwares, commercial software, they, they will have problems in cases like this going too large or you start to lose acu accuracy, okay? So here the point is that we're starting to lose accuracy, solvers start to become unstable, particularly the matrices. Okay, so we have it in 18 and now I go to 20. So see that also we have a limit in the maximum delta T. So if, if at any point the delta T becomes larger than that, it will stop there, it won't go like, uh, won't go, it won't use higher time step. But see here that now it's taking more iteration and now I see that things are going wrong and now it diverge actually, it diverge. So this is the problem with very large time step. So here there is, I know that it was the, the time step was too large. I miss a lot of physics, okay? Nothing to do. So here probably you will, start to reduce on the relaxation. Now that is the problem there was your time step. You want to go fast, but you are losing stability and accuracy. So that is not your idea. So if you go back, you put there 20, as I told you, 20, 10 is a good, it's my personal maximum value, but good accuracy stay on one, probably maximum two or three incompressible solvers. Incompressible, they are much easier to work. So they're probably five or 10, you, you still can get something accurate. So with this case, I think I will stop. Okay, at this moment also, well, we have a few times that so we can post process. So seven easy cases, probably not this last one, it's not that very strong, but the previous six, we study everything that is going on and now we put everything in practice in this final case. And I have the Mac number there and then you press play and see that your solution is progressing. Now you will need to let it iterate or march in time until everything stabilizes, your shockwave settles. Actually the shockwaves there will be dancing a little bit. And probably that is why your, your, your steady solver will resolve and have problems because there is a strong interaction between the boundary layer and the shockwave. So there is where the solver, the steady solver is having problems in capturing that interaction. So. I think that is all for, for, for these tutorials. I hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, just feel free to drop me an email. Just com complicated questions.
question plus and well uh thumbs up if you like it thumbs down if you didn't like it and if you have such a suggestion please let me know thank you for your attention bye and see you next time